Sure, I think uh, the first thing to say is just to explain where they've come from. This is part of a consultative process that has gone on over the last six to nine months with coaches right around the country. It's not just coming from the EPC, so we've cherry-picked some really good ideas. I think we've added to them, and uh, the announcement today is very significant. I think it's uh, probably a watershed in international activity. Uh, there's three sections to it. The first is uh, what we're going to do in relation to teams, the number of teams we're going to run. The second is uh, the way we're going to appoint the coaches, and the third is the way we're going to present caps. So the first one is the immediate uh, steps are to drop the under 15 and under 20 international sides. Uh, next year then we'll drop the under 17 international sides. Uh, the logic behind, let's say, the under 15 is that we want to keep more kids involved at under 15 level than are at the moment. The present system really gets down to about 35 or 30 very, very quickly, which means that anybody who isn't in that 30 is gone, they're forgotten about. So what we want to do through a series of regional academies is to keep maybe 150 or 180 kids in for most of that year before the decisions have to be made to get down to a number. And by doing that then you're training more youngsters and you're encouraging more youngsters to become involved. So we think that's worth trying, it happens in other federations, we're going to try it. Uh, we hope to have four or, five, four or five or six regional academies around the country. We haven't decided on the venues, they will come out of uh, the cooperation that we get from area boards. So in a way the area boards that cooperate with us in terms of getting venues and all of that, that's where we'll go. But obviously population centres are important there so we can all guess where at least two or three of them will be. Uh, you know, Dublin, Cork, Galway, we'd hope to have one up in Ulster and then the other two we'll, we'll see what we do. At under 17s it's kind of a, a similar uh, situation in that the under 17s at the moment has always just been the under 16s coming through and maybe people dropping down from the under 18s but it doesn't allow for late developers for people who have missed out earlier mm -hmm. and there are examples of people who miss out so we're going to regional academies for them as well not quite the same numbers but you know but for that reason and again we think it makes sense at under under 20 we don't want to be unkind to our under 20s but the stats show us there that that is not a level we've done well at over the last two or three years and we know why it is a lot of our players coming out of under 18 go to college or go to the states or go away or more recently with the advent of the senior teams coming back in some of those players want to play for the seniors rather than the under 20s so we haven't fared well at that level and we think we'll give it uh, we'll give it a miss in FIBA competitions, but what we're going to do is talk to the BI colleges. Uh, they have an option, whether it be World Student Games or whatever. So I've already had a chat with the chairman of the colleges committee, and we'll be advancing that over the next few weeks to see what we can do. So we really think it's it's all good. It's win win win, and certainly we're trying. The second part is the appointment of the Euro coaches. So as everybody will have seen in the release, we are going to appoint four permanent Euro coaches. Um, we'll do that between January and March of next year and they will take up their positions on the 1st of September 2018. The, reason be the reasoning behind that is to have people who have experience uh, in the Euros at those age groups to keep them there and use their experience rather than having to start almost from a fresh page every time you send a team out. So for instance, uh, Tommy and our wonderful under 18 girls who silver medalists in the Europeans. Uh, in an ideal situation, and Pat O'Neill knows I'm not saying anything negative about Pat, but in an ideal situation it would be great to have Tommy staying to, with that team as they go into 80&A. Now we're obviously committed to Pat and he's doing a fantastic job, so I know Tommy is going to help Pat next summer in Division A, so that's all good. And it, it's not aimed at individual coaches, it's more um, the theory of this, that if you have somebody who has experienced under 16 or under 18, keep them there for a few years to get maximum benefit. So again, we're going to try that. We, we do think it makes sense. And we haven't preordained who those four permanent coaches are. It'll be open for um, for interview uh, before we make our decisions. So it'll be all good. And I should mention as well that in terms of appointing assistance to those coaches, we'll be looking to coaches who are working in our regional academies who are helping. 
because we need all the coaches to be on the same page. I'm not a technical person, basketball-wise, but the EPC has got you know statistical and technical analysis over the last year, 18 months, and we know, for instance, or I'm told, that our biggest problem across all our teams is shooting. You know, so we need to address that, and the place to start addressing it is under 15 and whatever, and we want the coach in Cork to be doing the same as the coach in Belfast, the same as the one in Galway. It can't be all uh, independent views. And we have some fantastic coaches around the country and uh, everything has been positive when we went to them quietly and asked their opinions. Um, plenty of criticism, which is what you want about existing things, but the major thing was we got so much positivity, it was just fantastic. Um, the final thing is kind of a minor thing, but it's an important thing, is uh, how we're going to distribute international caps, and it's quite simple. We will give out, uh, interna present international caps to underage teams in the year in which they go to the Euros. Now, that doesn't mean that it's only 12 caps for that team. Anybody who plays in preparation games will also get a cap. Um, and on senior level, it's a simple rule. Every senior will present a cap the first time he or she plays for Ireland and that'll be it, that'll be kind of their lifetime cap. So we're going to start that in 2018 by awarding caps to everybody who's on the 2018 Small Nation Championships, women and men, and then we take it from there. After that, it'll only be if you're, it's your first international that you'll get a cap. So look, it's as I said at the beginning, it's kind of a watershed uh, moment, uh, big changes, but um, Already, kind of in the three or four hours since you put out the release, uh, there's great messages coming in that long overdue, let's give this a go and whatever. So, again, you know, the under 18s during the summer, um, in, a ver in very real times, are a platform that we have to build on. So, we have been working on this for six or nine months. It's not a, a reaction just to that, but it's a good time to do it, I think. So, it's out there now and it's, it's on with it. Perfect. Thanks, William. Okay, no problem.